The Golden Spruce. A True Story of Myth, Madness, and Greed is an environmental non-fiction book written by John Valent and published in 2005. It revolves around the controversial and true account of the felling of a sacred tree called the Golden Spruce on the Queen Charlotte Islands of British Columbia. The event garnered widespread media attention and triggered a collective outcry from people of both Native American and European descent who mourned the loss of this iconic symbol of Canada. Valen's book, adapted from his earlier New Yorker article on the same subject, focuses on the enigmatic figure of Grant Hadwin, an environmentalist who perpetrated the act of felling the tree and subsequently vanished without a trace. Valen provides insight into the origin of the Golden Spruce's name, derived from the language of the native Hayden Indians in the Pacific Northwest. Referred to as Kiatkus, meaning elder spruce tree, this unique spruce with golden leaves began its growth approximately two centuries ago. Towering at an astonishing height of 165 feet, it earned reverence from all who passed through the region, even as the logging industry expanded and deforestation took its toll. Valent meticulously describes the logging process, offering captivating accounts of the complex relationship between the Hayden people and the European colonizers who introduced industrialization to their land. The book delves into historical conflicts, such as the 18th century battles over the sea otter trade, shedding light on how logging became intertwined with European shipbuilding needs and its significance during World War II for aircraft production. The author emphasizes the inherent dangers of the logging profession and the lives it is claimed. However, Valent avoids romanticizing the Hayden people's plight as their land becomes increasingly commercialized. He provides a balanced perspective, exploring the complexities of the historical and cultural dynamics at play in this environmental narrative of myth, madness, and greed. In his research, Valent uncovers evidence that even before the arrival of Europeans to the Queen Charlotte Islands, the Hayden people themselves were responsible for environmental destruction and the endangerment of certain animal species. Despite this, the Golden Spruce held a special place in the hearts of the residents of Port Clements, becoming a legendary tourist attraction. It stood as a symbol of untouched natural beauty, untouched by the forces of capitalism. Within the context of the tree's history, Valent weaves the narrative of Grant Hadwin, a logger who initially finds satisfaction in his work but undergoes a profound spiritual transformation, becoming consumed by the environmental impact of the logging industry. Hadwin confronts his superiors, expressing his refusal to partake in the hypocrisy of preserving the golden spruce for its beauty, while countless other trees are being felled every day. He views the golden spruce as a facade, concealing the industry's destructive practices. Driven by his obsession, Hadwin reaches out to the government and media, attempting to convey the urgency of the environmental crisis to the outside world. While Valent provides limited insight into Hadwin's personal background compared to the geographical context of the region, he briefly touches upon Hadwin's family life and hints at possible mental health issues that may have contributed to what many perceived as a psychotic break. The enigmatic climax of the Golden Spruce culminates with Hadwin swimming across the freezing Yakin River on a January night, naked and equipped with a chainsaw. He proceeds to hack at the Golden Spruce, leaving it weakened but still standing. Hadwin then disappears, and two days later, the tree succumbs on its own, causing a domino effect, toppling numerous other trees in its path. The ending remains shrouded in mystery, leaving readers to contemplate the repercussions and symbolism of this dramatic event. The purpose of Hadwin's act was to expose the people of the Pacific Northwest to the contradiction of worshipping a single tree while disregarding the fate of others. Following his arrest, Hadwin is set to appear in court, but he vanishes shortly thereafter. Five months later, his scattered belongings are discovered on the shore of an uninhabited island. Speculation arises about his fate, with some suggesting he met his demise during his escape. Given his survival skills, however, his whereabouts remain a mystery. While the story acknowledges the haunting nature of humanity's relationship with nature, critics point out the book's uneven balance between historical accounts and character development. They find a psychological exploration of Hadwin's character to be lacking in depth. Valen does not extensively delve into Hadwin's potential mental illness, his family dynamics, or his extensive travels prior to his descent into madness. A reviewer from Quill Choir expresses disappointment that the pivotal question posed by the story, how can loggers claim to revere the forest they destroy? remains unanswered. The shocking aspects of Hadwin's tale overshadow this crucial inquiry. I hope you enjoyed this video leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe thank you.